Hello, welcome to the St. Ignatius College Prep College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each of our schools will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Daisha and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items for you. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. And this is one of many different sessions happening today, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Ignatius. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Arizona State University. Hang on just a second, having some trouble here with my screen share. Oh no. Chelsea, we can see it. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah, just... Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I was, um, okay. I'm used to sharing on the other side and I yeah. it before, so sorry. It's okay. Um, it's okay. We can see it. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, my name is Chelsea Flug. I am from um, Arizona State University. I am one of the two Midwest Regional Coordinators um, located in the Chicagoland area. So I work with students from the states of Indiana, Wisconsin, and um, Illinois. And um, I've been with ASU for almost six years now. So um, really enjoyed my experience and I'm really excited to be here tonight and help you learn a little bit more about ASU. So thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the very first thing, most important thing to know about ASU is um, this is something that is at the center of everything that we do. Our charter, it's very, very important to us. Um, ASU likes to measure our success as a university based on how inclusive we are um, ver versus being exclusive. So a lot of universities like to pride themselves on it being really in, um, exclusive with, um, academics and, and whatnot. And ASU, um, we actually like to pride ourselves on the opposite. We like to think we do things a little bit differently and that we have a really unique approach to how we, um, how we enroll students and how we educate students. And so um, we like to measure our success as a university based on how successful our students are. Um, so we know that there are several ways to do that, especially with a university of our size, um, like forming little communities at, on our campus, giving students ways to to do that, form their social circle. Um, and we have become very successful at um, building those programs for students so that they can um, succeed at the university. So a couple of things, also things to know about us is that um, we are one university um, that is really focused on innovation. Uh, we are number one in the US for innovation, have that had that ranking for the sixth consecutive year. So we're really um, very, very proud of that and also um, number four and um, public university in the US for first year student experience. And I think a lot of that has um, to do with our residential communities and then also all of our student organizations that we have on campus. So we have over a thousand registered student organizations and clubs. So with the university of our size, um, obviously it's really important for students to be able to form their community. And so we've provided a lot of ways for them to be able to do that. And I think that is one of the biggest reasons that um, students are enjoying their experience and they're um, feeling like ASU is a home away from home. 
So ASU is a university, one university in many places. So all the same entity, um, even though we do have four different campuses in the Phoenix metro area, you can see here that this is um, a map kind of showing you where everything is, where all of our campuses are in relation to the airport and then in relation to one another. Um, so I'm gonna go over a little bit more in detail about what is on each campus. Um, so we do have 70,000 total undergraduate students at ASU. They're all spread out across these four campuses. So the degree program that you pursue is what gives you the option of what campus you're located on. So each campus has its own unique set of degree programs that we offer at ASU. Um, and so depending on what that program is, dictates what campus you have to choose from. So you have the option to utilize the resources on any of these four campuses. They're all connected by a shuttle. So you can go to and from very easily as a student, hop on the shuttle, take a class or two on another campus. But the key thing is, is that you don't have to do that. You're not required um, to take a, take a class on any other campus. You're not required to go there for anything if you don't want to. Some students want a multi-campus experience. So they choose to take a class or two or utilize the library or the rec center, um, other resources that are on the other campuses just because they want that experience. They want to see how it's different, but that's totally up to you. But all these campuses are 100% self-sustainable on their own. They all have housing, ac um, academic advisors, Bear Honors College, everything that you need from start to finish for your degree program is located on that campus. So another thing that makes um, ASU really innovative, as I mentioned earlier, being number one in the US for innovation, one of, this is one of the reasons that we have received that ranking so many times is because aside from the unique programming options that we have for students, degree programs, things like that, um, we also are very proud of this structure because um, you get to really choose what campus you want and what environment you is best suited for you. So we realize that a lot for a lot of students, the really huge campus that's really active, has a lot going on, a lot happening, is not the right fit for everyone, but they still want that um, research one level university, Pac-12 um, division one athletic experience. And so you really get the best of both worlds with ASU because you can choose what type of environment you want, what, what size, what location. So um, the first one here is um, the downtown Phoenix campus. It is, um, it has about 11,000 of our total student population. Um, and it has our professional based programs like nursing, um, our Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, um, one of the top five journalism programs in the nation, so very strong. Um, the second campus there, Polytechnic campus is in Mesa, Arizona, and it has, um, it's on, um, it has about 5,000 of our students total, and it has some of our um, technological-based engineering programs and a lot of our entrepreneurial programs. Um, the Tempe campus, 50,000 probably out of our total 70,000 undergraduate population, um, the arts, education, those types of programs are located there, as well as our Pac-12 Division I athletics. And then the West Campus is similar in size to the Polytechnic State Campus with about 5,000 students. Um, so this, I'm just gonna go through quickly because I'm running out of time, um, but this is our assured admission criteria at ASU. Um, we operate on this policy knowing that if you meet this criteria, you're going to be admitted to ASU 100% guaranteed. If you are under this criteria, we will still review you on an individual basis through the committee. So still an opportunity there. And then just to give you a quick, um, rundown of our visit opportunities here, you can go to our website tours.asu.edu to get more information and sign up for any of our virtual programming or our in-person walking tours. And then that's me and that's my contact info. So I'm um, sorry, I kind of had to fly through some of that at the end, um, but if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out through me to me through that email address, or of course um, I'll be on the rest of the session for this evening and prepared to answer any questions then. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arizona State University. Our next presenter will be Grand Canyon University.
Hello, uh, my name is Shafaris Turner and I am a University Admissions Counselor for Grand Canyon University. I am actually based here in Chicago and I work with all students at St. Ignatius. So just some quick facts. We are a private Christian and affordable university located down in Phoenix, Arizona. We have over 200 academic programs and about 175 of those are undergraduate programs. We have over 200,000 students on campus and that number continues to grow every single year. And then we are division one athletic school. Um, so why GCU, what makes us different? Uh, for one, we focus on hands-on learning. So if you're in the medical field, we have our cadaver lab on campus that you can use. If you're an engineer, we have a variety of maker spaces, so engineering labs, robotics labs, and more, all in no additional cost. For faculty involvement, even though we're considered a large university, we really focus on small class sizes. Um, so for our general education courses, those don't get over 100 students. And then once you're actually in your major, those classes range from 25 to 50 students. That way you're still getting that one-on-one -on -one attention from your professor, not fighting for office hours, things of that nature. We focus on student empowerment through clubs, student leadership positions, internships, and campus jobs. And then that affordability piece, we don't charge an out-of-state tuition. Our tuition is actually locked in at $16,500 a year, and that has not increased in the last 14 years, which makes us right on par or if not cheaper than the schools here in Illinois. And then we also have a free application. Again, we have over 170 um, academic programs. Some of our most popular ones are our medical studies. So nursing, pre-med, pre-pharmacy, pre-position assistant. Um, engineering is also really um, popular. So engineering, mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering, and electrical. And then our College of Business as well, in addition to also having education, psychology, and so much more. Um, for the Honors College, if you have a 3.9 weighted GPA or higher, you do receive automatic acceptance into our Honors College. And there's no additional cost to be a part of this college. So in addition to graduating with a minor in honors, you'll also have all of these benefits like faculty mentoring, there are certain um, special study abroad trips that only open to honor students and more. As far as the campus experience, so just a shameless plug, we are ranked number six as the best college living in America and then number 19 as the best campus in America. Um, so for living, we have dorms and apartments on campus. As a freshman, you can live in either a dorm or an apartment. There's no restrictions there. Uh, we have a variety of pools and gyms that you can use. We have 21 popular eateries like Chick-fil-A, Panera Bread, um, and all those are included in your meal plan. And then also as a student, you get a ticket to every single home sporting event. You get access to any events we have on campus. And then of course, all of our clubs that we have on campus as well. Again, we are division one athletic school. So we have 21 different sports, uh, pretty much everything except for football. We are a huge basketball school. Um, if you're not a fan of basketball, you will be by the time you leave GCU. Uh, we're actually ranked number one as the best student section by ESPN. Um, if you are an athlete and, but you don't necessarily want to eat, breathe, sleep sports, we also have 22 club sport programs. Um, again, back to that affordability piece. So tuition is $16,500 a year. Once you add in room and board and fees, our cost of attendance is about $27,000 a year. And that is before scholarships and financial aid. As far as admissions, if you have a 3.0 unweighted GPA or higher, you don't have to submit any test scores and you are admissible to GCU. Um, if you have between a 2.5 to a 2.9 GPA, then that's when you have to submit either the ACT or the SAT. Um, and if you don't meet these admission requirements, we have another process that I can talk to you about to try to get you accepted to GCU. Uh, for our scholarships, our scholarships are renewable for all four years, um, besides the first one, which is the Chancellor Scholarship, the rest of them are all based off of your weighted GPA or your test score. So you can use either one to get the highest scholarship package possible. Um, in addition to the academics, there are also additional scholarships you can earn. Um, so we actually have a partnership with St. Ignatius. Simply because you're graduating from there, you'll get an additional $4,000 a year if you live on campus 
Or if you decide to live off campus, then it'll be an extra $1,500 a year. For visiting campus, you can participate in one of our virtual tours. We also have um, live sessions that we have with each college so you can learn more about each major. And then once you're accepted to GCU, you'll be eligible for Discover, which is an all expenses paid trip to come visit our campus. Um, GC pays for your flight, your meals while you're on campus, and you get to spend a night in the dorms and really get to see what it's like to be a student before you make that full on commitment. So if you are a current junior, you can apply now for fall 2023. Um, our application is free. You can do it on your phone. And it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to complete. And then lastly, this is my contact information. I did include my cell phone number, as I know students love to text. Um, so if you have any questions, you can text me, call me, or email me. I am here to help you and your family make the best decision possible. Thank you, Grand Canyon University. Our next presenter is Hawaii Pacific, Hawaii Pacific University. Aloha. All right, let me share my screen. One second. Okay. All right. Aloha, everyone. My name is Susie Prenovo. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions for Hawaii Pacific. I'm actually based regionally in the Seattle, Washington area, but I work with both freshmen and transfer students from the mainland, including Chicago area. So welcome. So you're looking here at a picture of our main downtown urban campus in Honolulu. So we have about 4,000 undergraduate students, making us the largest private university in Hawaii. We are not religiously affiliated. We are independent private. Small classes, typically about 20 to 25 students per class and a 16 to one student faculty ratio. And we have 45 different undergraduate programs, which I'll talk about in just a second. But first I'd like to take us all to Hawaii and let's check out a quick little video. This was move in day and the beginning of our new student orientation this past August. So let's check it out. about that is um, I'm an HPU mom as well because my son's a freshman this year at Hawaii Pacific so I got to be there during orientation and candlelight ceremony and really celebrate their students coming from all over the world and that's really one thing that you will experience at HPU we were recently ranked the most diverse private university in the U.S looking at both ethnicity as well as cultural diversity and regional and geographic diversity as well. Students from around the world are who you will have in those small classes. And now let's take a quick look at where you're gonna be going to school. So our campus, so we are on Oahu. Technically we have three campuses. The main one is right downtown Honolulu. So an urban setting right in the heart of the business and financial district. So easy access for internships, great restaurants, just within minutes walking. You don't need your car. Um, all students get a city bus pass as well as we have our own shuttle in between our main downtown campus and our quieter Hawaii Loa campus. So this is a little more peaceful um, residential setting where our science programs are, our labs are as well. And then we do a shuttle every 15 minutes back and forth over the Ko'olau Mountains. 
We also have our uh, Makapu campus, which is Oceanic Institute. So for our marine biology, oceanography, environmental science students, it is our research facility. But truly our students are using the whole island as their campus. You're exploring, you're hiking, you're enjoying life in Hawaii. You're seeing the sites, some great art, some great museums, um, fun things to do, of course, in Waikiki. And if you like the outdoors, perfect weather for that as well. Now let's take a look at academics, over 45 different programs. Some of our popular majors include our sciences, health sciences, our marine sciences. We have the largest school of nursing in Hawaii. Um, our largest program, as far as how many students, are our business programs. So we take full advantage of being right in the center of the city for internships and bringing in experts into the classroom. Keep in mind when you're applying to any of our majors, it's direct entry except for nursing. Um, and it's very easy to switch majors if you're not sure what major you wanna do, or maybe you wanna do a double major or minor, we make it very easy for our students to do that. We have 100% internship guarantee. All students, all majors are going to have that opportunity to get those hands-on experiences that really make you market ready and able to get great jobs after you graduate. Some fun things to do as a mid to small size university, it's very easy to get involved. Um, coming in, we have a two different honors program. One is our residential honors. It's a four year program. We also have major specific scholars programs for our nursing students, for marine biology and for business. Um, so if you're interested in a, our student newspaper, or if you're artistically inclined, you can join one of our music programs, um, campus recreation. We also have an e-sports uh, and e-sports team that competes. And of course, study abroad. So you can go all over the world. A lot of students are like, hey, I'm already in Hawaii. Um, I'm just gonna experience life here. But we do have an extensive study abroad program as well. We are division two. Pacific West Conference. So here's a list of our different sports, including our cheer, dance, and esports, all with scholarships. To apply, we have our own application and we are a part of the Common App. Um, we are going to need your transcripts, of course. We are test optional and will be test optional next year as well. We like to know a little more about you, so we prefer a personal statement and letters of recommendation, but those are also optional. And then if anyone is thinking of applying, we give uh, fee waiver codes. This is the one for this year. Um, next year, it'll be Suzy23. So as long as you're in our mailing list, you'll get notifications of your free application days. And then for scholarships, we do an automatic academic scholarship based on your overall GPA. That remains with you all four years, as long as you maintain satisfactory academic progress. And then we have additional scholarships that are stackable, things like uh, for our band or orchestra um, or cheer and dance and other um, in our athletics as well, because we are D2. So we really want to make it uh, affordable for students, even though it's all the way out in Hawaii. This is my contact information. Um, also, we included here a QR code if um, you want to take a quick screenshot or a picture on your phone that'll pull up our inquiry card, or you could just email me for more information. As we like to say in Hawaii, mahalo. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Hawaii Pacific University. As a quick reminder, you are able to ask any questions you have for our panelists by using the Q&A button on your screen, and they will be able to respond to you that way. Um, our next presenter will be University of Redlands. All right, great. Um, thank you all. Um, hello, good evening. My name is Sebastian Brown. I am the admissions counselor here at the University of Redlands that works with students throughout the entire state of Illinois. Um, I am actually here in Illinois right now, but am based um, on campus in California. Um, I'm also an alum, so I'm excited to share a little bit more about everything that's happening at Redlands and where you may find uh, your future. So to get started, 
Um, where on earth is Redlands, California? We are in Southern California. We are very conveniently located um, centrally, so within uh, Southern California. So we're about an hour from the beach, the mountains, the desert, and Disneyland, all equidistant to campus. Yes, you can visit all four of those in one day and still sleep in the same bed that you woke up in that morning. Um, I really like this location for us because it means that our students have access to everything that Southern California, Los Angeles, Orange County, San Diego has to offer without actually being in the city itself, where it may take you six hours to drive six miles just because of the traffic. So everything from having free parking for all of our students all years on, on campus to having a new train station. So students can actually take public transportation into LA and Orange County um, without having to worrying about the traffic, parking, et cetera. Um, I'm personally excited for that. I am a LA Galaxy season ticket holder, so I won't have to drive three and a half hours to the stadium and pay $50 for parking anymore. Just a quick trip through the train. I'm really excited for what that means in terms of access to Southern California for our students. Redlands is a smaller campus. We're home to about 2,500 undergraduate students, but we actually require and guarantee housing on campus for our students all four years, which means that although we're 2,500 students undergrad, it feels more like four or 5,000 students because everyone sticks around. So there's always something happening on our campus. We have over 120 clubs and organizations ranging from Greek life to honor societies, we have a very competitive Division Three athletics program with over 21 uh, varsity programs, as well as a very robust intramural athletics program. About 80% of our students participate in at least one intramural sport. Personal favorite is life jacket water polo. So you don't have to figure out how on earth they stay afloat. You just throw in your life jacket, float around in the pool and have a good time with your friends. Um, other forms of being involved, um, as well as diversity and inclusion on our campus. About 45% of our students are first gen or the first in their families to go to college, as well as our students of color. So we're also recently designated an HSI or Hispanic serving institution. All these things to say, it's not just about representation, but also support and access for those students throughout their time here at Redlands. Mention a little bit about housing. One of the best things I can recommend is come and see it for yourself. Um, the different residence halls, the close-knit communities that you'll find at Redlands, but other forms of support and resources. For example, you are entitled to two hours of tutoring per subject per week, and that is included in your tuition here at Redlands. So we want you to be successful and find that sense of home, both in the classroom and in your extracurricular opportunities. As important as your experiences on campus will be at Redlands, so are the ones that you will have off campus. And I'd say the three largest ones are studying abroad, community service, and some sort of an internship or summer job. Now for study abroad, Redlands students, over half of our community will go abroad at some point during their four years. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, your tuition follows you abroad. So whatever you're paying in terms of tuition and room and board, you pay that same amount regardless of where you go around the world, if it's more expensive than what you pay at Redlands, we cover those additional costs. We also don't limit students to specific countries or cities. So you may choose what you see in this picture here is our flagship program in Salzburg, Austria, where we actually have a campus. Students typically visit anywhere between eight to 10 countries in just four months. Or you may try to do a more specific location for any various reasons that you want to do a more cultural or language immersion program, something like that. But our students truly go to any city around the world. The last is our calendar system here in which we are done and graduated at the end of April so that all of our students have a four month summer break, fantastic for internships or summer jobs, or you may choose to stay for our optional May term, which is one class that you take just for the month of May, or you may study abroad during that time as well. I also mentioned community service, which is a graduation requirement here at Redlands, and in fact helps us stand out amongst all of our graduates. We are one of two schools in the United States that is nationally recognized as both a top producer of the Fulbright Scholarship and of the Peace Corps, which I think is a great testament to our study abroad programs and that commitment to community service. Academically here at Redlands, we're a liberal arts and sciences institution, which means a few things. 
one, all of our students come in undecided or undeclared, and you have the freedom to pick your, change your mind, change your major up until the end of your sophomore year. So for us, you'll see a couple of numbers um, in these programs, but I'll point out a few key ones. One is business four plus one, in which students can stay for one extra year and get their master's in business, their MBA, and that saves you a ton of money and time um, in just condensing that program into five years instead of a potential six or seven. We're also very well known for our environmental science and environmental studies programs and something known as the Johnston Center for Integrative Studies in which students can create their own major and have had things like astropolitics printed on their degree. Hint, that person now is a lobbyist for NASA in Washington, DC. Something I think it's really important about Redlands is our average class size is 18 and our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. So how are you going to get here to Redlands? We are a common app school. It does cost $50 to submit your application. As your admissions counselor, if you shoot me an email or a text and say, hey, can I apply for free? I'll give you that fee waiver happily. Um, we do have two deadlines, November 15th and January 15th. Again, I can kind of coach you on what might be the best time for you to submit an application. When it's all said and done, your time at Redlands will take you four years and no longer. We actually guarantee that you graduate in four years. If it takes you longer, we cover the cost of your tuition for any courses that you have to take beyond your fourth year. Southern California sounds expensive, but I will say as an out-of-state student myself, it was actually cheaper to go to Redlands than it was for me to stay at home and attend my state school. And that's because our average financial aid package is over $46,000 per year. And this year, for example, having a high GPA will earn students an automatic um, merit-based achievement award of $34,000 alone. We also have several other forms of grants and scholarships to make it an affordable option for our students. So take a quick picture, stay in touch with us. Most importantly, come and visit the campus. We have the world's cutest mascot and no one can argue with me on that. So come visit our Bulldog and stay for a tour. Thanks. Thank you, University of Redlands. Our next presenter will be Full Sail University. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, my name is Derek. I am a community relations representative here at Full Sail University, and excited to give you guys a uh, little look into who we are at Full Sail and all that we offer to our students. So let's go ahead and jump right over into my presentation. So Full Sail University, we began back in 1979 as a recording arts workshop. So we have now um, moved down into sunny Winter Park, Florida, which is a suburb of Orlando. And now we offer degree programs in specifically the entertainment, media, arts, and technology industries. So uh, we have a short little video to kind of introduce what goes on at campus and break down those degrees. So without further ado, we'll check that out and then come back in and explain a little bit more about what goes on here at campus. So uh, that introduces kind of a little bit of who we are at Full Sail and what goes on in our campus each and every day. So our areas of focus are a little different than those uh, traditional universities, and we help our students get into the industries of music and recording, technology, games, media and communications, art and design, business, film and television, as well as our newer sports industries. So um, we'll break down more about those industries here shortly. But Full Sail, we are located in Winter Park, Florida, so I have to uh, kind of take a page out of um, those at Redland University. They are close to wonderful Disneyland. Well, we here in Orlando, we're actually close to Disney World. We're about uh, 20 minutes away from uh, the park as well as Universal Studios. So a lot of fun and exciting things for us being a entertainment school 
it's great to be in a nice entertainment city. Uh, we are nice in Central Park or in Central Florida, excuse me, meaning that there's a lot of opportunities for you to go to the beaches, either that be in South Beach down in Miami, East or West to go to the Gulf Coast or the Atlantic, or even up north to the white sand beaches of the Panhandle. There's just so much that Florida offers there. But uh, where we're located in Winter Park is a college town. Uh, we actually share this area with two other universities. So it's uh, kind of like a melting pot of college towns. There's actually um, over 30 different housing options we offer to our students. So I'm actually gonna be posting some resources in the chat for everybody. Um, so if you guys want to take a full look at all of those different housing options, you can do that there. But we try to highlight our differences throughout our tours here. And the first one is the pacing of our programs. We offer a 120 credit, fully accredited bachelor's degree, but we um, deliver that in half the time. Uh, we do so because the pacing of the industries our students are going into are 24 seven, very fast paced. And there's a lot of uh, creative demands that come with that. So we want to prepare our students in that manner. So to receive your bachelor's degree here at campus, uh, that's going to be a 20 month program. And online, that'll be a 29 month program. Uh, so we'll be actually moving you through your um, degree uh, very efficiently uh, by, move, by completing one to two courses per month. Uh, so accelerated, but again, preparing you for what life's gonna be like in a very hands-on project-based method. Uh, we also offer the flexibility with our rolling admissions to begin your program at any time. We have start dates every month here at Full Sail due to the pacing of our programs, which really offers that flexibility to begin when's best for you. Uh, throughout your time here, uh, we'll be talking about the ability to come back anytime. Why we say that is because technology is at the heart of a lot of what we teach here at Full Sail. Um, I can imagine with all of us probably having cell phones or some sort of technology, there's always new um, you know, updates. If you have like an iPhone, new iOS update or an Android update, bug fixes for your apps. Well, if you think of that, well, our technology is always upgrading in our curriculum. So we update our curriculum each and every year to teach our students what's industry standard, but we also wanna make sure we offer that to our graduates as well. So they can come back and relearn any new technologies within their program at no additional cost. Really helping them kind of uh, prepare for the longevity in their career as things may change. And to help in that initial job search process, besides working on those career modules, beginning to prepare you to <clears throat> work with our career development team, you'll also be creating your very own portfolio. This way you'll be able to showcase to potential employers exactly what you're able to do with your creativity and the cool projects you've made here on campus. So we're gonna spend some time jumping in and talking about our graduates. Uh, if you're familiar with any of the projects that you guys see up here in this little collage here, uh, just this year, or just this past year, excuse me, these are all of the different projects that our graduates worked on behind the scenes. Things like the Suicide Squad, Loki, uh, you see uh, Space Jam up there, Black Widow, among others. So it's always really cool to see what our kind of uh, what kind of projects our graduates are working on, because a lot of times they're up for some pretty amazing industry awards that you guys probably hear of all the time. So uh, just this last year at the Academy Awards, we had 85 graduates credited on 31 Oscar nominated projects. At the Grammy Awards, we had 59 graduates credited and at the Game Awards, 157 graduates credited. So we always love to uh, applaud and really brag about the achievements of these graduates and all the cool things they've had the opportunity to do once they've got onto their career. But to get into those industries, um, they're working at, or get in working on projects for those awards, they're working at some pretty amazing companies. So like I said, our career development team is very expansive and they offer lifetime support for our graduates. So they make sure that you guys are able to, uh, as you maybe uh, can guess, if you're working in film or in gaming, you're not gonna work on the same project your whole life. So it's nice to have people besides the professional network you'll be building here on campus to assist you in finding out what kind of opportunities are out there for you. But we've been talking about what it is we do on campus, what we do in the classroom and school-wise, but you got to have fun while you're in school. So we have a lot of very fun student clubs and organizations available for students to dive in and uh, really explore their creativity and also build their professional network. Uh, these student clubs are great for those opportunities as well as really help you build um, those lasting friendships that we hope everyone finds in their college experience. Uh, but one student club that actually has come or that has become our own um, collegiate team is the 
Esports Club, the Armada. So this is our largest, um, this is actually the largest esports arena right here on a college campus in the United States. And that is the university, our university's fortress. So we love to always kind of bring that on. But with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and send it back to our next folks and let them continue. Thank you, Full Sail University. Our last presenter tonight will be University of Southern California. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I look forward to talking with you all this evening. I know that our time is a bit short now, um, and I want to make sure that you have my contact information after today. But I do want to give you a quick overview. I just dropped in the chat how you can uh, reach me in the future. Um, USC, as many of you um, already know, um, is a, a large private research university. We're one of the largest private schools in the country. Uh, we have almost 20,000 undergraduates, which makes us large compared to your in-state privates, but about half the size of, say, U of I. Um, I think that uh, we've been uh, categorized together at all sunny, warm locations. So any of the schools you've heard from in our group tonight uh, will take you to a nice, warm locale. Um, but USC is known for a number of distinctive factors. And uh, these on the screen right now, I want to just highlight for you. Um, USC has over 150 different majors and minors that students can choose from. And at USC, most students are studying more than one thing. So maybe you want to come in with business or computer science, but you didn't want to give up your passion for music or dance, or you want to take something in philosophy or pre-med, but you still want to take those courses in cinematic arts because you've got a passion for filmmaking. You can combine anything at USC. Um, and we encourage students to do that, whether it be between combined majors, major and minor programs. USC is also very well known for our global perspective. We have one of the largest global or international student populations of any four-year school, but we also are ranked sixth in the country of sending our students overseas. So that gives you the opportunity to have that international experience, whether that be for a month, a semester, a year, we even place students for international internships. We really want you to be a more informed global citizen when you graduate from USC. So even if you knew you wanted to be a business major and open that bakery down the street, that's great. But we still want you to have that understanding of international business, um, infusing that global education into all areas of study at USC. We're also a research university. So our students can be involved in research as early as their freshman year, first semester. We even have undergraduate research funding to help you pay for your research expenses or to pay you to do that time in the lab so it's not just volunteer work. Um, and we also have the student undergraduate research fund to support you over summer months should you want to stay in Los Angeles conducting research. And research is not limited just to STEM fields. We have research opportunities in all of our majors at USC. One of the things we're also very well known for, of course, is campus life. USC is a work hard, play hard school. Um, our students are very involved, whether that be in clubs and activities regarding sports and intramural activities, um, community service, professional societies, our cultural centers. We have a first generation plus center on campus. Um, lots of opportunities for our students to be engaged, involved, um, performing arts, the Trojan marching band, symphony orchestras, um, lots of opportunities for our students to be engaged, be involved, continue those things you've been passionate about during high school, but also try out new activities, things that maybe you hadn't had a chance to experience. Uh, previously. We've got over 80 different religious organizations on campus, um, so lots of different options there. Of course, we are located in downtown Los Angeles. Um, I know that uh, Derek mentioned that, or excuse me, um, it, our representative from Redlands was talking about traffic. We certainly have traffic in LA like you've got out in uh, Chicago, so um, that is something that our students are aware of. The campus itself is kind of like an island in the city. It's a gorgeous campus, I know I'm biased, but it does give you the opportunity to have a self-contained campus with your housing and classrooms and everything right on campus, but still have all the options of the city for nightlife, shopping, cultural, entertainment, internship opportunities by being in the city. And we do have two different uh, metro stops at campus, the Expo Line, 
picks up on campus, last stop is Santa Monica Pier. So uh, even if you take beach volleyball, you can uh, take the expo line to get downtown. And of course, Trojan family. And many of you are already aware of our Trojan family because of our strong connections with families at St. Ignatius. Um, but that becomes a group of over 300,000 living alumni worldwide that help guide, mentor our students with a common shared values um, and work together to help support our students and even do scholarship fundraising um, in Chicago to help support our students. As far as applications, USC is on the common application only. Uh, we have a USC writing supplement. We will be test optional this next year. I do want to highlight that as a private school, we know private schools can be very expensive. Uh, USC does meet 100% of your demonstrated financial need using both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. We also have about 20% of our students receiving merit-based scholarships, and that's based simply on your application for admission. There's no additional application forms um, needed in order to apply for merit scholarships. Um, I did put up on the screen here um, my contact information. USC does strongly encourage you to visit campus, whether that be virtually or in person. Uh, we do not count demonstrated interest at USC, but we know you'll make a more informed decision if you have a better chance to learn more about us. So I did want to provide you that information. Um, you can sign up for those, uh, I don't know why it's register with a V, but um, you can sign up for those virtual events or campus tours. We are doing in-person tours again. We also do information sessions about all of the academic departments individually. So if you want to learn more about applying to the School of Cinematic Arts or to the Business School, Engineering, any of our liberal arts majors, that gives you that opportunity as well. So thanks so much uh, for your attention and uh, I'll uh, quit sharing my screen. And I think that about wraps us up for the evening. Thank you, University of Southern California. We have reached our time for today's event, um, but I would like to share my screen with you one final time to go over some closing remarks. So thank you all for joining us for today's session. When you close the window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions. You'll be able to find the recording of this session as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Ignatius. Thank you all for joining us and we hope you have a wonderful evening.